Hello. Well, today I'm going to take you back to your primary school days, and we're going to do a show and tell. Do you remember when it was your turn to do the show and tell in the morning? That night you went home and you decided what were you going to bring to school? Were you going to bring your favorite teddy bear or your banky or some Lego something that you made? Well, it was exciting for me as a teacher. I always taught primary grades. And today I have a lot of things to show you, including my lace blouse, my teddy coat, which you're all waiting to see, some makeup. I have oh, my amaryllis. Do you remember the first day I showed you this? I am doing great. And as you know, we have the the contest going on with four or five of the kids to see whose amaryllis would, would bloom first. Oh, someone else. I got a text last night from Patrick, the elf on the shelf that every year visits us here on Nanny and the Moose. And every day he hides somewhere else and you look for him and let me know when you can find him. Sometimes he's in unusual places, sometimes harder than others, but we're going to find Patrick and play that game again. I'm trying to find some fun things for you to do. You know, for a lot of people, the holidays, Christmas season brings on the blues. And it's very understandable. Sometimes we don't see family. Sometimes we're not feeling well. You know the drill. And if you can get excited about some tiny little simple things like like finding Patrick or um, doing something fun for yourself in the house, do it. Try hard not to get those blues. Now, I've done most of my makeup this morning, not on camera because I, I, I have so many things to talk about and show in this video. And I saved the one part that I always mess up, oh, at least 99% of the time, is my under eye lash line. And the reason I like to do something is because I have pale eyes. And when I don't have mascara on or something under my eyes, my eyes kind of disappear. And, and I want them to pop, if, if that's a word. When I try and put mascara on my lower lashes, I don't like that black harsh line. So I've never used one of those pens or wings or anything like that. I like a, a, a less is more look, if you can say that. But I've tried to put mascara. I do have some lashes. They're not real long, but they're there. And I sometimes take my brush and I try to just touch those lashes. It never works. I always get a blob or a line that looks like there's mascara on the skin. So what I've done, I think I told you that I did send away for some uh, crayons because I felt or I had heard that you could put something under a creamy crayon on and then sort of blend it in and it would at least define under your eyes. So I'm going to do that with you now. Now, this is called a jumbo, I guess, a jumbo stick, and it's made by NYX, N-Y-X. And it was only $5.98, I think. And it says that it is blendable. Now, a lot of them say waterproof doesn't move, but I wanted one that maybe I could blend a little bit. And I ordered the color bronze because I didn't want the black, I didn't want the brown. And this is kind of a shiny bronze. And I'm going to try and do it now with you to see if it's going to make a difference. Now, number one, I'm gonna have to use mirror. I think that's half my problem all the time. So I've got this little mirror here and I'm gonna try and do it. Now, maybe it won't be dark enough, but you know, already it looks dark and maybe a little bit too much. Now, this stick does not have the little uh, blender on the end. Another one that I had gotten has a nice soft cushion and then it's a blender. You take it and you mush it around and, well, I'll go back to that. Okay, let me do this eye now. 
It's a fat crayon. And you know what else? Ooh, I think that did something. Maybe over here it's a little too harsh, but you know what else you can do with this crayon? First of all, let me put this down for a minute. My table here is so crowded, and this is where the Christmas tree is going. We've got to do something with this mess here. Now, let me show you this. Do you see the color? It's sort of a bronzy color, brown enough for someone who doesn't want a black look under your eye. And as I say, it's very creamy. I guess you sharpen it with a pencil. It's not detractable at all. But I wanted the creamy one to be able to mush it around. Now you also can use it above your eye up here for a darker look. Dare I try it? Should I? Let me move this a little closer and you can help me do it. All right, let's see. I'm looking into the camera when I should be looking into a mirror. That's part of my problem. All right, let's see. Now you can compare it to the other one. Does it do anything? Should I leave it alone? Maybe a little bit out here. Well, we'll see. You can tell me if I have to smudge it more. That's my problem, see? I don't give myself enough time to check it out. I'm gonna do here. Okay, well, I think it's better than the blurby mascara, don't you? <laughs> now, when I finish this clip, I will check in my mirror with some glasses or something on and to see if it's... The other one that I did buy, if I can find it here, is another one. I think this one is a L'Oreal eyeliner. And on one end, it does have the crayon. And this one I think is brown. I didn't get black. This is brown. It's much more of a smaller one. But on the other end, it's not as big, but it is creamy. I I like that word creamy. On this end, whoops, I pulled the thing out. No, it's not supposed to come out. Anyway, here on this end is a little black smudger. It's like a sponge and supposedly you can sponge it. And I think that's probably better than using my fingers. So, so far as the makeup goes, the other two things that I got, as you know, I, I use these duo contour sticks that I think are $11.98 for both of them. And I don't go for the, the reddish, uh, I was gonna call it rouge, you know how old I am, <laughs> but it's blush. And I've instead adopted these um, sticks. And they're, they're a contour stick that I only use on my cheeks. And I think it's enough color. It gives definition, I think, kind of um, makes my face a little less wide. I don't go up on the cheekbones. That's where I put my highlighter. But I use this, the darker one. And it is a, you've seen the color. It's um, kind of a, a tannish brown. And I put that on sticks. I love the sticks because they're fast. And now I've got the pencil and I don't have to worry about taking time with brushes and everything. I'm not a fan of putting makeup on. I don't enjoy it like a lot of women do. I just want to get it on uh, because it makes me look better. So that's why I wear it now. Never did all my life, but now I do. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a funny story about perfume. I think I might've told you that since 1969 or 70, when we lived in Scotland, I have worn an Estee Lauder perfume called Estee. It was, she brought it out in 1968 and I started buying it and wearing it then. And my babies at the time loved to smell mommy. And as I kept buying it over the years, I always got it in Macy's or a department store. And it was $28, then it went to 30, 32. It was cheaper when I started. But about 10 years ago, for some reason or other, Estee Lauder stopped making that scent. And she did come out with a new scent and a new bottle, and a different bottle completely. 
And that was called SD, except it didn't smell the same. It definitely was not my SD. So I started seeing it on eBay and they were calling it the rare perfume that's not made anymore. And so I was forced to buy it on eBay. And as the years went by, and this was 10, 12 years ago, I think, something like that, uh, it the price went up and up because supposedly it was rare. Well, it was, it wasn't made anymore. And I loved it, Moose loved it. <laughs> Everybody said it was nanny. Even when I was teaching school and substituting, I was in my late seventies, substituting at a local school, and the kids would come walking through the halls and say, oh, Mrs. M must be in the building. I smell her perfume. I mean, Estee Lauder has a lot of oils in it and people would stop me if, even at the end of a day after putting the perfume on. So I wanted to keep buying it. This turned out to be a long rabbit hole story, but the point is it is now the cheapest bottle that I can find. They even sell half bottles and quarter bottles that they get so much money for. And they, <laughs> the price is now, the cheapest I've seen it is $195. And of course it says make an offer, but I did that once and I was able to get one, believe it or not, it was a, a real, it was the last bottle that I bought and it probably was a year ago. And I think I paid $150 for this bottle of SD and I wore it and wore it and it was mom. And I said to myself at the time, well, this is probably the last bottle that I'm going to have. I think my SD will outlive me because I'm, you know, a year ago I was 85 and I thought, you know, <laughs> the, the law of averages says my perfume will probably last longer than me. Well, guess what? It didn't. And a couple of months ago, it ran out and I'm still here. So I'm debating. I did have some wind song that I used to wear in high school and college. And uh, I've been substituting with that. And I've had some complaints from some of the kids. You know, mom, you're not smelling the same. What's up? I even had a neighbor who said that when we visited them one time, she could still smell me in her couch three weeks later. Now, you could say that might be good or bad, uh, bad for, for Mrs. What's her name. <laughs> but anyway, so when I went to the doctors the other day, you know, hope this isn't gonna turn into a big rabbit hole, but I, as he was the nicest, most personable doctor, we were kidding around. And he was laughing. I said, well, I'm 86. Something had to happen like this. He was my, my knee doctor. And I said, I told him the story about the perfume and that I vowed I probably didn't have to buy another bottle. But I said, here I am. And I'm debating. I said, now those things, darn things are $250, $300. Some are even more. They're outrageous. Why? Well, obviously, I wouldn't pay that. But maybe for a great my one and only Christmas present, I might try and make an offer on a $195 bottle. So I was telling them the story of all this and he laughed and when he left, he said, Mary Ellen, buy two bottles of that SD. And I thought that was kind of cute. So that's the end of my rabbit hole story. And I think the end of my makeup show. Now I have a couple more things to show you too, besides that teddy coat. I um, have had many of you ask about the seasoning that we told you Margie put in her turkey soup, which made that turkey soup so special. There was just something in it that she brought up that was just wonderful, different. I thought it was anise, that licorice spice, but she showed me what it was and Moosey immediately sent for some. Now you can buy this on Amazon. I think it's also sold in the Amazon Fresh store. Okay, this is the original Creole seasoning. Creole seasoning. Now it is salty, so watch that. Taste it first, you're gonna get a strong salt test. But when you put in, I put this in, I made a um, tortellini soup the other night, which was huh, so good. I'll give you that recipe another time. Uh, the maker of this is Tony Shasher. Now that's probably pronounced wrong, but I'll spell it. His last name is C H 
A C H E R E apostrophe S. So it's Tony Shashier's original Creole seasoning. And if you will, I think we paid $3.98 for it. Delicious. Actually, Moosey bought two extra ones, one for Matt and um, Cindy for their uh, soups and things. I think that's all my show and tells. I showed you all my makeup, my um, amaryllis. Patrick arrived today, so keep your eyes peeled, by the way. This is bothering me a little bit here. I wish I had one of those nice, big, long, skinny necks to show off this beautiful um, lacy trim. Now, this too, I think I might have, you might have seen this. I wore this to Tessie's bridal shower at Debbie's house, and I got a lot of compliments. Look at the sleeves. Is this beautiful or what? It's gorgeous, and um, it's not what I'm wearing to the wedding, but I thought I would wear this because I can put my coat over it. Now, I have my new little booties. We're calling them booties because they're short boots. It has that tiny kitten heel. I've been walking gingerly around the house, keep that means carefully, and they're not a problem. They're short enough not to um, give me any sort of a pitch and I'm being very careful. Now, I will wear these when to the wedding because it would be a shame to, with my nice outfit that I've planned for a month or two to wear something else on my feet. But um, I will be wearing the, the satin bronze kimono with it. And uh, when it gets chilly, I'll just wrap this nice. I'll probably be sitting in um, Moosey and I. Matthew has ordered me an extra rollator. So Moosey and I will be arriving in twin rollators at the wedding, but that's okay. There might be a walk in from the car. And uh, uh, most of the time I'll probably be sitting. I might get up and visit people or not, who knows? But um, just for getting around, the rollator is for me the most enjoyable. I don't like the walker and I don't like a cane. And, um, and I can turn around and sit on it anytime I want. So, I have put a couple of clips of things that um, I've done outside. This morning, I was up very early with Shamu. By the way, Shamu has been staying in every night from about 5.30 when it gets dark until about 8.30 in the morning. I don't like to put her out too early because uh, in the past, last week, the coyotes were um, arriving on the roof about 6.30, 20 minutes of seven, three mornings in a row, row almost exactly at the same time. Shamu. That's not the place for you to be right now. Come on. Come on. Oh, jeez. There she goes. Oh, God. I started to tell you a little while ago that I uh, was up very early this morning. And when I went out with Shamu, I decided I was going to take the pumpkins away from the front door and also the Thanksgiving wreath off the front door. And I found a tub right in my patio that hadn't been put away in the shed. Now see, those tubs I can't get to. So someone's going to have to help me. And I think Matt's coming up tomorrow with the extra rollator and will help me with those tubs. But uh, uh, fortunately for me, I was able to carry all my live pumpkins and they're sitting out there on the wall. <laughs> they have not gotten soggy yet. I have about five of them, a couple of big ones and some small ones. And I'll just let them sit there until they decide to mush out and then I'll throw them down the hill and maybe we'll have pumpkin vines next year. But this one tub that had been sitting out here was filled with all my poinsettia plants, fig ones that I use every year. And I have about six or seven of them. And I also had the wreaths that were, that I had gotten out before my knee injury. So I managed to get everything down from the front door and, and the pumpkins away. And I put up my, my wreath on the door which fell down when Moosey went outside, but that's okay, I put it up again. And um, 
my, my poinsettias. And so it looks pretty Christmassy. Now there's some other things outside that I had started to go through tubs and they're covered up with blue tarps. I might not get to that. And it might not be the Christmas that it might've been other years. I haven't been able to go all out here in the cottage like I used to at our big home, but, but that's been okay. And as the years have gone by, um, my Christmas house, my Advent house, my little wooden house, well, it's not little, it's big, but it has 25 little drawers. And I, I used to put candies in there every night. And in the morning before the, Colleen's kids went to school, they'd run down to the cottage and check and see what the little prize was for the day. And those exciting days are gone because we don't have little tiny ones that can run in and out of the cottage every day here. And I always used to set up my, my manger with all the camels and the cows and the sheep and the Mary, Jesus and Joseph and the shepherds. I still might do that if I can find that tub. We will put up our Christmas tree right here. So I'll have to move this table that way a little bit. I've done something with the mantle. It's not my favorite things. I have carolers and all of those things. You know, Dub sent me some pictures of something that she did a couple of days ago. I think it was over the weekend. She dragged out all her Christmas tubs. She's like me, she got the Christmas bug and I must have 12 Christmas tubs too. And she dragged all her stuff out that she'd been collecting for years and years and years. And she had all her children come up and the grandchildren, I think she has five, six is on the way with Molly. And um, she had them pick what she wanted. First, she made a table of the things she wanted to save. And she still does decorate her home to the, to the 10th degree. And it's beautiful, but she does have extra stuff like I do. And so she just put what she wanted to save on one table and she thoroughly enjoyed looking at the kids go through all the tubs and picking out, especially the little ones, picking the things out. Molly picked out a Raggedy Ann doll that I used to collect Raggedy Ann dolls from the thrift shops for years and years when our six kids were little. And I had a Raggedy Ann bench and I had six, seven, eight Raggedy Ann sitting on one bench and all the girls loved them. I had the big giant ones. Remember those Raggedy Ann dolls? I had the little ones, the medium ones. And little by little, the girls took a Raggedy Ann and Dubby had her Raggedy Ann and little Kelly chose Raggedy Ann and it has not left her arms since then. They chose the musical big, merry-go-rounds and things and and her son Patrick's kids had fun what a wonderful thing to do have you done that yet because I think that's something I have to do in my quest to purge and that would be fun because there's a lot of things in those tubs that I think the kids will remember from all those years growing up traditions are great but at some point like now you have to kind of get over all that in your head because it's different, let's face it. It's not like the old days. I mean, we still do wonderful days. Uh, we still do wonderful things on Christmas Day. And uh, we always had our, our big Christmas morning Eve on the 24th, the big, big um, brunch and the games that we played. Everybody brings something. It doesn't have to be new. And we would lay them out on the big tables. And I think I showed you pictures of that. I don't think we'll be doing that this year. Um, of course, we didn't do it for one year or two years during COVID. And um, people start doing other things. And although that 
meant a lot to us. I'm trying to get used to all this. And as you know, I'm an optimist and I will get through this. But we're still doing wonderful things. We still always go up and uh, we're there when Colleen and Micah's kids come down and see the tree. Of course, they're all grown now, college kids, and Shani's a senior in high school, but it's still fun being with them. And then we pop around to a couple of the houses. Now, I don't know whether we'll be able to do that this year or not, but hopefully we'll see at least all our own children at some point, Billy and Bonnie are coming down from Idaho and will be staying down here, probably with Bridget. Uh, Bridget is one of Billy's kids. And um, I think we'll get to go over there because they're not too far away, but I know we'll see everyone. And um, maybe not all together, but say la vie. It's still Christmas. And when you think of the real meaning of Christmas, it's a, a time of gratitude. Uh, a time of looking forward to another wonderful time of our life, eternity, um, a happy birthday to Jesus. It's time for feelings of a different kind, not so much the merriment and the Santa Claus of years ago, but definitely different when you're older. And those of you who are alone, I hope your day is wonderful. Even if you can't have a friend come over or, or a relative or someone, just enjoy the day. Maybe with some good memories. I, I, I don't know what to say about that. That must be hard for those of you who have lost people during the past year, a couple of years, but, but memories are a good thing. It's not living in the past, it's recalling the past. It's part of your history, part of your life, and I hope it's been a good one. It's time to show the coat. And then I have to get busy around here. I am uh, starting some stockings. I keep checking things off, but at least I'm going to finish a uh, little PJ stocking. I've started that. I had to get a light in my sewing room there and I have Shani plug it in for me because my sewing machine wouldn't light up on its own. It has a little tiny light, but it's not sufficient for 86 year old eyes to be able to sew. I need a light from the back of my head. So I stole one of the, um, the pole lights from Moosey's World and I'm putting it behind me and the lights are shining down on the whole machine and, and what I can be doing. Funny how I got along all those years without that light, but once again, it's part of change, isn't it? So here is my coat. Now I have my Ralph Lauren skirt on. As I said, I don't have the, the top and the pearls and the, um, the uh, bronze uh, satin kimono on that I will be wearing to the wedding, at, but this is the coat. Now, a lot of you said, what is a teddy coat? Now the original teddy coat was designed and created by an Italian designer, Max Mara. And his teddy coat was way up there, I don't know, a thousand or more. And it was a very quality type coat. But, but the main thing was that it was a, a faux fur that looked kind of like a teddy bear. And whether it was a high pile fleece or, or some other kind of a faux fur, I don't know what his was, but it did have the nice big collar down the front and it was long. But I found a coat on Amazon that is not Max Mara. It qualifies as a teddy coat and I adore it. I never would have bought a Max Mara. I never would have been able to, nor did I want one. But when I saw this, I realized that this was the coat that would go with my outfit and would keep me very cozy and warm during the wedding, which is a tented outdoor wedding at four o'clock. By the way, it's on Friday. And at the same time, I could get a lot of wear out of this coat all winter long, just throwing it on. 
Now, the Teddy coat, I think, was designed about a year or two ago, but it's been very popular and I believe still is. Teddy coats are made in three-quarter length or the longer length and various different designs. But this is the one I love and I'm going to put it on for you now with my booties too. Now, I realized I, sh I still have to steam the lining. It's a, it's a lovely lining but it's a bit wrinkled from being in the box. I have had it um, hanging up, but I do have to get the wrinkles out of the, the lining. So I'm gonna put this on, if I can with my shoulders, by the way. Here we go. And I'm gonna go back and show you this great coat. Don't you love it? <laughs> and I love it with the booties too. I wish I could really show you the booties up close. And I'm walking okay in them. I'm just being very careful. What I love about this coat is it's warm. It's not flimsy at all. Oh, it's so cozy. The sleeves are a great length. I love the full length of it. Now there are two I guess buttons you could button it with, but I kind of like it as a coat that you can just let it go over jeans or skirts or any outfit whatsoever. The collar is great. Now, if my hair were up and I haven't decided how to wear my hair, should I wear it up or, or keep this hairdo? I don't know. But if the collar is up, you, you know, it would keep your neck warm. I love the lapel and I think I paid $60 for this coat. Now it was part of the Black Friday, Cyber Monday type thing. And I think now it might be 12 or $15 more, but love the lining. It has a beautiful lining. It's not cheaply made. And for the money, I think it's a great dupe for Max Maris. But I kind of like this. It's playful and I'm telling you, it's going to keep me warm. I could go up to Big Bear Mountain and probably sit and watch the skiers all day in this. By the way, I did do another round of um, my Remington Hot Rollers this morning just to kind of refresh it. The curls had sort of dissipated and um, I wanted to see it one more time to see if it would do it a second time and um, I haven't washed my hair since. And it did, it took them nice and tightly. I did put that spray on first and it did keep them. So I'm debating about whether to keep my hair down or to put it up for the wedding. I hope you enjoyed my little show and tell. I had a lot of things to show you and I know there's probably some things I forgot. I did show you the blouse. I will put these, um, the information. Now, as you know, I don't have an Amazon store. I don't have uh, links to all these things because I don't get anything. I just tell you what I like and you go ahead and order it on your own. Uh, they're not through me. Now, the wedding is this Friday. I'll be putting this video up tomorrow, which will be Tuesday. Um, it's, a, it's an exciting time in the family. Tessie, of course, is all excited. She's picked up her dress and, and um, fun times ahead. Dubby is all excited as mommy of the bride. So until my next video, which will include wedding clips and whatever else is happening around here, I love you all. I thank you so much for all your wonderful comments and putting up with a few of my little upside down videos. Some of you said you just put it down on your desk and it turned the right side up and you just watched the whole thing before I finally had to take it down. So 
Good for you. Sounds like something I probably would do. Bye for now. I love you. And God bless us all, everyone.